Hello, this is Duncan Nisbet, the roving reporter for Let's Test, here with Ilari. Hi, Ilari, how are you doing? Excellent. How are you doing yourself, Dunks? Very good, thank you. Very good. I'm glad we finally get to talk. Very smooth intro. Very good. <laughs> <laughs> I try. I try. I'm trying, to have, um, I'm trying to have a consistent theme running. I haven't quite worked out what the theme is yet, or the consistency. We'll get there. <laughs> so, uh, obviously, we're here to talk about Let's Test and uh, your Tester's Walk in the Park session. But before that, I just want to talk um, a bit about yourself and how, did, how on earth did you get into software engineering? So, I was reading your blog and uh, you come from a linguistics and sociology background. What was the what was the shift? What made you come across to the dark side, as it were? Well, it's it's basically stumbling into it. It's, it's kind of if you dig even further. Um, I've had many different jobs. I actually started with um, uh, business administration. So I did a bachelor in business administration, and right. worked in a hotel. Uh, and then I was uh, a flight attendant on a plane. And then I I, I drove <laughs> uh, uh, trucks uh, for an import company. And uh, so then I studied again sociology and linguistics. So, but I didn't finish them. Um, so it's a bit difficult to explain what it is. It's kind of the base studies. It's before uh, Bologna. So uh, I didn't finish the studies. Right. Uh, uh, but actually, that was interrupted by the whole testing gig. And uh, the reason I got into testing was that I, I just I simply needed money. And, right. um, so there was this, this medical device company. They were just looking for people who knew how to set up computers. And I just happened to know how to put a Windows uh, image on a computer. And uh, so what initially was a, a kind of a three-day job then uh, lasted for seven and a half years. And I just got <laughs> into, into software testing. Um, yeah, so in between, I also did um, a, a secondary study in software engineering. So there was another three years um, studying software engineering. Uh, right. I did by no means become a good software developer. I wouldn't hire myself as a software developer. <laughs> <laughs> I would throw myself out immediately, so I wouldn't qualify. Um, yeah, so basically I just stumbled into it and I liked it. And uh, there is a quite a big misconception sometimes that people think, oh, Ilari, he's he's yeah, he's an own guy. He's he's a he's a good tester. Um, I'm not that. I'm not a practitioner. I'm not a I'm not a hands-on tester. Um, I'm a manager of testers. I can yeah. spot talent and I can um, I can. Um, kind of build a garden for testers to flourish. That's, I think, what I'm, what I'm good at. Not at testing. Uh, I know a thing about uh, a thing or two about testing, but probably in a project there are far more uh, better practitioners than I am. Right. So I guess in the uh, the agile parlance, you'd be one of those servant leader types. Mm. <laughs> I, like, I like the, the concept. Serv servant leadership is a very very good concept. I like it a lot. Um, there is kind of a religious um, branch of that as well which then becomes a little bit weird, but generally the concept of being in the service of the people you lead, uh, I find that a very sound concept, um, which unfortunately is not so often available on the market. Um, it appears to me that many managers have become managers to have power. And, mm -hmm. um, I think that's the wrong motivation to become a manager. I'd say one of my... Uh one of the managers I really enjoyed working for, he turned the hierarchy on his head and he described himself as the roots that allowed the, the workers as the leaves to flourish. Yeah. yeah. I thought that was a really nice way of doing it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's a really cool. refreshing view. Yeah. Yeah. And then, so the sociology background, I guess, is kind of lending itself quite, quite well at the moment. Obviously, there's a lot about social sciences coming through into testing, especially in the context driven community that we're a part of. Right. Yeah. Uh, I guess a lot of that, your background there is helping with the ideas that are coming forward now. Well, it's quite interestingly, when I was at the university in Zurich, um, there was a very, very big divide between the quantitative sociologists and the qualitative sociologists. And uh, the, the Zurich branch was very, very much into quantitative sociology. So right. they were very fond of their statistical models and just calculating stuff. And I, at that time, already found that's the uh, a pretty big, big bullshit uh, direction to go to since it doesn't discover anything new. So it, it's actually there is a lot of parallels to testing um, in, in the sense of uh, the the movement of automate everything in testing yep. and uh, actually explore the, the product. And it was actually exactly the same thing in the sociology department, uh, just handling the tools, the, the, the statistics tools and kind of calculating stuffs and, and correlations. It was just fucking boring it was not there was nothing nothing there and um 
so then there were some lectures by qualitative uh, sociologists that talked about kind of, you know, what's the impact of dirty uh, laundry for a marriage and stuff like that. Or how do uh, does the male population behave on beaches where is topless bathing? Yeah. Just absolutely fascinating stuff because they were just people kind of, OK, setting up their story on. That could be an interesting thing, and then just went um, into the wild and, dis- and, and observed and explored the whole situation and described all that. It's hilariously interesting and just funny, and, and so far removed from the quantitative, boring correlation diagram drawing yeah. uh, section of uh, sociology. So yes, I think there is a lot of um, a parallels between sociology and their branches and, and the kind of the, some of the devices that are available or are kind of present in, in the testing community. Yeah, it sounds a bit like kind of applied psych, uh, applied psychology, applied sociology, the, mm. the the qualitative side. Yep. Yeah, you have to provide some uh, links that we can add to the video because I'm interested to know more about that. Sure. Yes, it's I can't remember. There is a French sociologist, um, and the name it's Kaufmann. I think it's, his name is Kaufmann, Jean Claude Kaufmann. Let me Google that. <laughs> Just, <laughs> uh, I think it's Jean Claude. Uh, and so was he the guy yeah, giving the lectures? Yes, Jean-Claude Kaufmann. Well, no, he didn't. Um, very unfortunately, he didn't. Um, so if you Google him, you will see a guy that has a moustache, very broad. He looks like an interesting guy as well. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, uh, Jean-Claude Kaufmann. So uh, K-A-U-F-M-A-N-N. Got him, yeah. Bald. Yeah, bald and moustache. <laughs> that is a big moustache. Yeah, and so he, he actually he wrote bloody interesting books. It just it's it's a, it's a joy to read them. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, we'll give that a look in. Thank you. Sure. Excellent. So then, uh, so moving on now, your uh, you mentioned the sorry the science. Oh my god, I'll have to edit this bit out. I know I won't. So you've just finished up at eBay. Yep. Uh, two and a half years was that. It's um, actually the thing is it's 2.79 years. Uh, the reason I know that is because this is part of the the agreement where they calculate uh, how many years you've been there. Um, so it's it's well, <laughs> so basically it's, it's almost three years. I would have been three years there if I uh, went until July. Uh, fantastic time. It's kind of one of my most uh, valuable times in testing that I have spent. I've learned so much during that time. Yeah, it's been good to see the stuff coming out from Ben, ben Kelly as well about okay. the, the, how testing has shifted. You, you see, the thing is, that's the the that's one of the things that I, that I really miss now. Um, that within eBay, the kind of the network of uh, the context driven people has been weakened by um, some of the the testers leaving. So there was Ben Simon who left uh, eBay as well, yeah. and I left, and I. Just very, very fundamentally enjoyed working together with uh, with Ben Kelly. Actually, just a week before um, all that change came along, we were in the US and we gave a workshop uh, to testers in in eBay, both in San Jose and in Portland. And which is we had a great time in the US together with Ben. So that that's certainly one of the the biggest thing I'm missing about eBay. Um, it's kind of working together with uh, with Ben Kelly. Yeah, I can imagine. He's uh, he's great to talk to, isn't he? Mm. Just so knowledgeable. Really good, yeah. Yeah. And uh, he's, he's so measured in what he says and how he says it. He just knows that it's, uh, it's coming from a thoughtful place. Oh, yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. yeah. He's extremely thoughtful. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Cool. And uh, so there's also the ISST, the, yeah. the International Society for Software Testing. Mm. So this is a relatively new uh, organization set up. How did that come about? What was the motivators for bringing that together? Well, um, it actually, what was the story again? I think, yeah, it, it originated in Ian McCowitz coming over to Europe for, I think it was a family visit slash some work assignment. So I think they had a meeting from his previous company he worked um, at in London. And uh, so I flew to London just when we, we met on a, uh, we went on a pub crawl, and so we, over a beer, we were just talking about the state of our community. Um, so we talked about the AST and all the good organizations that are around, and we yes. just had the impression that, um, 
well, actually, there is, you know, there's something missing. And so we pictured this, you know, this honey badger organization that became the stormtroopers for good testing. It's kind of a really, <laughs> you know, a, a really kind of a hardcore organization that does a lot of change. And um, so that that's where it kind of originated. There was a lot of peer involved. And then we did a little bit more talking about it. And I uh, thought we should in, involve a couple of more people so it wouldn't just be me and Ian. And... Um, so then we just came for for Henke Anderson and Johan Jonasson. So we thought, okay, these guys, they're serious. They have done uh, business in testing with House of Test and there's Let's Test and everything. So we talked to these guys and they were hooked immediately. And uh, yeah. so then everything went pretty quick. Uh, we had a, we actually set up the whole organization in a one day um, workshop in Lund at uh, at Henke's place. So right. we had barbecue and beer and we set up the organization. And then off we went. And so then uh, to launch the organization, we decided on a British pub. So we went to a pub and actually announced the the, the, the birth of the ISST. <laughs> uh, that was a really cool day. So we had a lot of fun there. Um, so now, of course, with me moving into House of Test, um, we are suddenly in a situation where there is uh, three people from House of Test in the board, uh, which, of course, is not a very good situation and not acceptable to us. No. So that was also one of the, the major uh, topics that we talked about in during our uh, drive to to, um, to Geneva when we handed over the petition. Uh, we'll, we'll certainly talk about that as well. Oh, please, yeah. Uh, so, yes, so we talked a lot about that. Um, so, A, we're fully aware of that, um, that concentration of one consulting company. Um, it's not a situation that we think is acceptable for the ISST. And so B, we have decided on countermeasures and we'll, we'll talk about, so it's, it's not, um, we're not ready to, to talk exactly about that. Of course. Yeah. Um, yes, we will actually change the ISST in a way, uh, that allows the, the existence of it without being biased towards just one consulting company. Um, so there is action planned on that, uh, on certain. Watch your space kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Cool. Okay. And I guess that will go up on the ISST website, will it? That information absolutely yes yeah, yeah. so cool. so we'll talk about it with the with the membership um and uh certainly that information will will go up um shortly yeah brilliant and sort of one of its first missions the ISST seems to set about the tackling the iso 29119 yeah yeah i mean you touched on it there you went down to geneva what was what was that what's the story behind that well, i guess gives a bit of background about the iso 29119 and what's uh, why has it got the community riled up and rallying against it? Well, it's got, it's kind of you know the the seed was actually kind of the seed for the activism was certainly pl- uh, planted at um, the last um, last year's cast in in New York. Yes. Uh, so James Christie's uh, presentation really kind of got the thing going, and um, I think it was just the spark that got the whole uh, dynamite uh, into explosion mode. So I think there was just kind of a lot of people. Uh, we're unhappy with that development. I remember Michael Bolton talking about 29.119 a couple of years ago. So there was just no reaction, and it was just uh, it appeared to not have been the time a couple of years ago to go full blast against it. And uh, so, cast was the starting point. Um, then pretty soon, the the uh, petition was born and um, got a lot of signatures. So. Yes, so the ISD has been backing that from the very beginning. And uh, yeah. so, I mean, nowadays, if you Google ISO 29109, um, you will see pages over pages of, of uh, critical comments and blog posts about it. So we basically poisoned the well. So if, if somebody really wants to know about ISO 29109 and Googles about it, uh, he or she will get um, uh, information from various backgrounds. So. A person looking for information can find that. So they will certainly find Stuart Reed's information about it as well as the critical blog posts uh, yeah, on yeah. it. And it's it's pretty easy to make up your mind on it. Uh, but I mean, very fundamentally, it it doesn't, um, software testing doesn't yield itself to standardization. Um, so st- uh, standardization is helpful where you want to reduce variation. Uh, so you don't want to have 1,000 different USB cables. You won't just want to have one yeah, yeah. That, that fits in. And well, it's, it's actually a bad example because it's, it's actually, uh, it's directional, so you can't plug it in. 
uh, in Poland. So it's, it's actually, a, yeah. so it is certainly a design flaw there. Uh, but it's just, just that. So it's kind of, you know, airplanes, screws, I want them to be standardized. I don't want to have, um, uh, uh, screws that kind of, you know, half fit and then, then pop out and kind of yeah, yeah. Make me eject out of, uh, 30,000 feet. I wouldn't, <laughs> wouldn't much appreciate that. Uh, but for software testing, that, that doesn't apply because it actually, it gains from variation. It's, it's one of these systems that, um, where variation is helpful. And, and so a standard is antithetical towards it. So this is the thing. So if, if ever somebody is in a discussion about the standard and, uh, uh, then somebody asks, well, have you actually read it? Um, then uh, you can confidently just reply, it's, it's not necessary to read it because the whole concept of it is flawed. And so the content, yeah, yeah. Uh, the content of the, the standard becomes irrelevant, basically. Yeah, I think uh, James Christie's post uh, discussing the standards as well kind of just reiterates what you were saying as well about mm. you can't have a standard in testing because, as you say, it closes down options. It just... Uh, yeah, it just brings in constraints too tight and just closes your your eyes to uh, possible options. Yep. So I just recently had um, an interesting discussion with somebody who um, actually asked, so, okay, but the standard actually will give you some ideas on, on how to do testing. So basically, it, it is a piece of inspiration. And so then we it just went a little bit back and forth. And actually, what we ended up with is that we both agreed that uh, checklists are actually a very cool thing. Uh, mm-hmm. where just look at it and, and kind of, you know, make your selection. Okay. Oh, that, that could be a good idea in, in, in this uh, specific situation. And, uh, so the other guy also agreed. Okay. Maybe the standardization is just not the right approach. It's more kind of having access to documents that will give you some inspiration on how to do testing. And these could be checklists or, or anything, anything else. Yeah, yeah. But this, this kind of half officially mandated, uh, way of, of putting a standard of that's how testing is done. It's just a very flawed idea. And yeah, you, you mentioned as well about the amount of blogs and paperwork, say, poisoning the well. But it's important to have that, isn't it, for continued opposition or sustained opposition? Yeah. You can't just have a flare up of people against it for a week and then nothing. Mm-hmm. So if we, if you don't want the standards to go ahead, we need to keep the sustained opposition, right? Absolutely. I mean, um, I think there, there are some indicators that show how uh, that, that, the opposition has been effective. Uh, so first of all, the, the promise part four for, uh, which was due to be um, published in fall 2014, uh, hasn't been published. And, um, I'm not aware of any publishing date for that. Um, and, um, so it will be interesting to see what happens and uh, whether or not the ISO will have a deep investigation into it or not. Uh, it's, got, I, I mean, we, we don't, we don't pop the champagne bottles yet, uh, and we probably won't in the future neither. Uh, it might well be that nothing actually happens, but, um, if ISO actually looks into what we ask them to look into, they might come up with quite interesting conclusions. And, um, yeah, so we'll see what happens there. So just giving them another angle, uh, angle to think about. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, brilliant. Okay. Well, fingers crossed for that one. On a, on a slightly lighter note, uh, I was reading on Twitter the other day, you attended a, an event that perhaps you shouldn't have been. The oh. Tech Mahindra event. Holy shit. That was, that was <laughs> one of the most enjoyable things I have probably ever done in my life. Not I'm exaggerating. It's just, but it's, it's, uh, so this was, well, how should I put that? Um, so, the whole thing was that there is this uh, big, big vendor company that has close to 100,000 employees, um, and they want to squeeze themselves into the Swiss market. So uh, they do their research. It's kind of obviously they come up with banks and insurance companies, so they will go for the big players, which is a sound idea. So it's kind of they they prepare themselves well to come into the Swiss market. And so they thought, um, okay, let's make this very professional and um, employ one of these event organizers. So they, they actually engaged a big event organizer that, uh, you know, selectively took a look at all the hotels and, 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 um, and seminar facilities in, in Zurich. And they actually, they went for a very good choice. It was really, really good. Um, and then this, this organization was also looking for um, a second speaker to kind of, you know, give a broader um, a view on testing. And um, so they saw, okay, there is basically uh, eBay and Google in Zurich. And then, so it, they probably went, they went through a, um, a LinkedIn search and then they ended up with me. 
And I thought, oh, that's that's very good. So that that would be you know somebody who knows about testing from the industry. So let's let's invite that guy. And um, so when they first um, asked me, so this was the event event organizer that that contacted me, and I said, yeah, sure, it's it's I talking about testing that that's always an interesting thing to do and uh so then they said well there's a, this big company that does an event and so i didn't know who it was and uh so then gradually there was a release of uh what company it is. so i went to their website i was kind of in horror i thought <laughs> oh look at that so they have a test factory and they talk about their tmmi five level and all wow. that i thought oh that <laughs> this will turn out interesting <laughs> that's very cool so i will most definitely uh, uh, honor my my commitment to this event. So by any means, if, even if I had been half dead, I would have shown up there. Um, so that was a lot of fun. So basically, the uh, the event started with a little bit of kind of you know champagne and and, and a little bit of chit chats outside, and so people turned up, and uh, I a couple of them I actually knew. So it was was also a, a, a nice um, it was a nice event to see people I haven't seen for a while, and uh, so they put me first in the speaker slot, and then I actually spoke about how we uh, married uh, context driven testing with agile at at at, uh, at eBay, and how the embedded testers in the team did their work, and so I talked a lot about kind of you know uh, getting rid of all unnecessary documentation, not doing any stupid metrics, and it's kind of you know certification is bad, and it's kind of you know, should shouldn't do for you know ISO twenty nine one hundred nine it was bad. I also had the the kind of the stop sticker on my laptop during the presentation, yep, yep. so it's kind of my my laptop looked looked really like an activist uh, laptop, <laughs> and uh, so it was really good. Um, um, Quite funnily, so at the very beginning, I told the people, so okay, let's have a let's have a, an interaction here because I will tell some things um, that that you probably don't do that uh, in in the same fashion in your banks or your insurance companies, and so the whole session was a very lively discussion. It was really constructive. There were uh, a couple of very interesting uh, and engaged people in the audience that that um, that started discussion. That was absolutely brilliant, and um, so. It's kind of, so we had a lot of discussion on on testers being information brokers and and all that. So it was really good. So uh, my slot I, I overdrew by about 25 minutes. So it's kind of uh, <laughs> and uh, so the tech manager people just let me go because the okay, there's you know people are engaged. That's a very good thing. Um, so then there was a short break and then the, the tech manager speaker came on stage um, and I mean poor guy. So he he was actually. Uh, telling the opposite of what I was just talking about. So they were all on TMMI level five and, you know, it's going to be off for our test factory where there is all the drones sitting in a row and doing their testing. And before I was talking about, you know, kind of the, the, the liberty and freedom of the tester to think critically and all that. So it was kind of really, uh, uh, the opposite of what I just spoke about. And, um, you can see in the faces of the audience, uh, there was a slight irritation. So, why do they bring this guy before them and, and all that? Um, that was fantastic. So um, at the end of the, the talk, I had a lot of exchange of business cards. And um, since I'm starting with my new venture, House of Test here in Switzerland, uh, yeah, yeah. that was actually pretty helpful. I'm, I'm meeting one of the, the guys from that event actually tomorrow for lunch. And uh, so um, I think Tech Mahindra didn't do any business at that evening. And um, I would think that they won't have me at one of their events anytime, anytime soon. <laughs> you, you might pay you to actually vet the, the speakers they're getting in. Yeah, it's just, it just, just. I mean, what they did is just they they invited Christopher Hitchens to a Ned Flanders family event. Um, they shouldn't have done that. <laughs> did the guy realise when he was speaking that everything he was saying just flew in the face of what you'd said? Did, yes. he, did he come across as being awkward or did he just kind of oh, go yes. through it? He was completely awkward. Uh, it's also the whole session started with a mess up. So it's kind of a, um, so when I, I, so when I arrived there, I, I kind of plugged everything in and checked my slides if everything works fine. So it's just to see kind of, you know, make, make a test and a yeah. little, little test run. Uh, they had a video with, uh, with sound. They didn't do a test run, so basically the whole video they played was moot because there was no sound and it, it just didn't work and they couldn't make it work during this. So it was, it was really nervous and um, and during his speech he, he kind of you know tried to link whatever he said to what I said, but that was kind of it's just impossible. 
yeah, it, it's just yeah, it was it was hilariously funny to watch. But also the poor guy, I, I had kind of I, I feel the felt a little bit bad because the poor guy was was just suffering up there and. And it, it's not a very nice thing to see people suffering, especially not the ones that are actually in charge of the whole things. He was actually just only the the, the delivery man of, of that presentation. Right. Uh, so poor guy, yes. So he didn't have the same interaction with him afterwards, no? Well, the, the thing is, so he invited me to visit one of these test factories in India, which is it's just fantastic. And, and so there was another sales guy who, who came to him and told him, so maybe next time you, um, you also talk about the case study of, of a more, of a, of a style of testing project that is more like, like what I talked about it. But they basically don't offer that. So he was kind of completely, he was completely ignorant on, on what they're actually doing. So it was just a salesman, um, kind of requesting something by his speaker, speaker. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that, that was, that was a lot of fun. <laughs> that sounds like there might be a uh, an experience report in there somewhere for uh, another conference. Yeah, yeah, might, might, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. How, how, how the party, party crash a big vendor? Uh, but I mean, basically, this was not, none of that was my work. That was just pure luck. That was just kind of you know the coincidence of somebody searching and me ending up there and just kind of finding myself in a situation where I was, oh look at that. How could that be possible? This this <laughs> be a lot of fun. Yeah, so. Christmas has come early. Yeah, exactly. Brilliant. Oh, pretty cool. Yeah. Excellent. Cool. Okay. So I guess we should move on to let's test. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so you're doing a session called a testers walk in a park. Yeah. Now this, this sounds most intriguing. Where did uh where did this idea come from? And actually breaking out the confines of the walls as well, getting yeah. outside. Well, it's it's just uh it's an ex- it's an excuse to put an official coat around walking around barefoot i think that's the <laughs> <laughs> um well um where does is that it... sorry is that part of the rules that it has to be barefoot i didn't read that in the description uh well that you know i will surprise everyone um it's kind of in the middle of the walk there will be some ogres coming and ripping off all the shoes of the participant <laughs> now the thing is um well it's kind of the peripatetic school is one of the um Thoughts, um, philosophies I like a lot because I think it is very effective. I have experienced myself that actually walking around in nature and talking to somebody else, um, is, is, uh, has a far more profound effect on, on kind of the exchange of ideas than just sitting somewhere in sofas and, and not moving. I think uh, physical activity and just moving around and, and talking about something is, is, is helpful. Uh, for insights and it, it just it, it it's a richer um, experience in interacting with other people so that was basically the origin of okay let's try that out for testing um, so you'd certainly like to know okay so what what's happening there um, the thing there is I have n- I have no idea yet um, it's, it's I just came up with the idea and um, that's not the first time so I usually don't actually actually know what I'm going to do uh, then I go through these phases. So when I submit the, the talk, it's kind of all very nice. And I'm, I'm the coolest dude on the planet. I will do that. Then I'll go through the misery curve of, oh, shit, how could I, oh, how can I be so stupid to submit such a thing? I have no idea what to do. And then something comes out. But what this, this is, I don't know yet. Um, um, it has worked out um, a couple of times in the past. Maybe I mess up this one. I, I don't know yet, uh, but 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 we'll see. So uh, if you ask me today, okay, what, what are you? What, how is this going to be? Uh, the honest answer there is I have no idea yet. Okay. So what's the what's the theory behind it then? That the you just getting more stimuli, so that, like you got the sounds, you got the smells as well as just. I don't, have you ever noticed that you know people in deep thoughts? The, the face is doing a lot of stuff and the eyes are kind of moving all over the place and there is the hand in the face and kind yeah, of yeah. the thinking thing. It's kind of, I think, um, I believe that our brain is not, not a kind of separate, isolated entity. It is kind of deeply ingrained in, in, in just our, in our body. Yeah. Uh, um, you can't really separate that. And, and our body basically wants to move. And I think just uh, statically being somewhere is not helpful for a, for a dynamic thinking process. So, yeah, but it's, this is all speculation. I'm, I'm no uh, professional in that, that direction. But I think uh, just being physically active also helps being mentally active uh, in some way because they're actually the, the same thing. You can't really separate that. 
Yeah, and what they say about keeping the oxygen moving as well, don't they? Keeping the, the blood yeah. flowing. All right. Yeah, yeah. That, that's another thing. Yes, if you if you walk around, then then yes, your your circulatory system um, is 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 very active as well. Yeah. Fantastic. Okay. Cool. So, if you're going to have like a theme, is it? I know you haven't got an idea. Have you got like a theme? I don't know. It's I'll probably get an artificial long beard and some some Greek, you know, robe or I don't know. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> and your leather thong sandals, of course. Uh, no, it will barefoot, so just barefoot. completely barefoot. Or uh, yeah, we'll we'll see. I, I have no idea how that will turn out, but uh, yeah, but we'll we'll see what happens. There's certainly worse places to go for a walk, isn't there? Oh as yeah. You might, oh. As you imagine at dusk, it'll be beautiful. Oh man, this is it's just. Um, I mean, the location of uh, Les Fest conference and the whole peninsula is just a dream. Yeah. Uh, so what I'm hoping for is that some people will sign up for for my session, who otherwise wouldn't have gone uh, for a walk on the peninsula. Um, so I want to invite everyone. So I have no idea what's happening. I can't offer you anything. Uh, <laughs> <just> <laughs> it will be a surprise. Um, but uh, yes, please do come along. Yeah, I think I'm going to try and make it. It'll be lovely, especially just the birds swooping down, aren't they? Settling down for the evening. It's just twilight there. It's gorgeous. Sure. It is absolutely. Yeah. So uh, what are you looking for? What are you looking forward to most going back to Let's Test this year? What's, uh, uh, people. What's drawing you in? It's the people, yeah. The people in combination with the uh, with the venue. Um, that that's probably the best thing. Um, it's kind of, it comes just as a, as an extra that all the sessions are usually of incredibly high quality as well. Yeah. Uh, um, but this to me also almost feels like an extra. It's just to me this is kind of our that's kind of the family event where everyone meets again. Um, in the living room of of the Runo Center, uh, yeah. uh, some klezmer band playing and and S labs going and and beer flowing and all that. Um, so basically, I'm I'm really looking forward to to meeting all all the the people from the community again. Yeah, it's because they they do pick some great entertainment, don't they? We had the magician last year. Ah, oh, yeah. He, yeah, he was fantastic. And the uh, the who was the band? The guy had the. Uh, I can't remember the name instrument, but he had like the really short trousers, but it was like the uh, boop, 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 boop. Uh, yeah, was one, what's the, I don't know what the genre of music is, but it was fantastic. It got people up and going, didn't it? Yeah, I, th- I think that the style is Klezmer, which is a, a, a Jewish um, um, rooted music. Right. Um, which is, I, I, it's, it's kind of folk, folk music uh, from the um, Jewish direction. I like Klezmer a lot. It's, it's very nice. <laughs> That's it. it was very different. I'd not come across it before to be honest mm. so yeah really good cool fantastic okay I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna wrap up now is there anything you else you want to talk about while you've got me hmm what should we talk about so uh, how are you Dance. I'm good Let, let's, let's just turn around so I'll interview you now so no oh, crikey okay so you're back in the UK now right back in the UK now yep yeah. uh, just finishing up at the BBC so yeah uh, on to past is new should be exciting yeah yeah so, where are you moving on now? From nothing, nothing at the moment. House husband at the moment. Yeah. So, okay. so we're in a very lucky situation that we can afford to pay the bills with Claire working. Yeah. yeah. So I'm going to try out a new venture, but it's uh, it's it's yeah, it's 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 interesting. All right. So talk a bit more about it. Well, I'm trying. I'm trying to move into a kind of coaching space, but I don't know how to. I don't know what you call it. And unfortunately, I'm having to use Agile as a marketing ploy. And I'm still trying to work out my niche. And I think my niche is if you're trying agile adoption and you're finding testing is failing, yeah, yeah. then I can come in and help you do deep testing in an agile context. That's, okay. I think, my niche. But uh, it's, it's quite hard sell. If, they, if they're paying for like an agile coach, then they have to pay for someone else to come and fix the work that the agile coach has done. It's mm-hmm. politically unsound, I guess. Right. So, yeah, it's, so it's fun. Your next plan. And so that, that, that sounds like independence again? Trying, yeah. Right, that's very yeah. good. So I can encourage you from own experience. It's a good thing to do, especially at the beginning when um, um, all your, your hopes are high and everything, <laughs> <laughs> the energy level is there. I said before you get beaten down. Exactly. Yeah. Cool. This will be the first time that it's been independent as in independent. So before it's been contract. Mm-hmm. So that, but, but then you're effectively just a member of staff. So that's like your five days a week, one client which is good because you're independent and you're responsible for your own finances, which I prefer. But mm. this is a kind of like pitching out to different clients and building a network. And right. 
So yeah, it should be fun and games. That's cool. You sound yeah. like the, the entrepreneur type. So let's, <laughs> <laughs> let's give it a go. But uh, I know one thing I'm looking forward to, let's test, is another challenge from you. Uh, Every year you set me a challenge uh, and I fail abysmally at it and then I go away and try it, think about it. And then, uh, and then I present it back to you about two months later and you go, has it really taken you that long to do it? Okay, so I, I have one for you right now. Let me, let me just draw that little, little thing. So can you, can you see this, this figure here? Yes. So, so uh, yep. You could imagine that being, uh, it's kind of, uh, uh, three squares, right? So, yep. kind of, you know, it's kind of like three squares. Okay. Three, so three squares in an L shape. Yep. Right. Can you see that? So, yep. okay. So, uh, this shape here now is cut into three equal, um, shapes that are yep. the same shape and the same size. Oh, yeah. Okay. Right. Yep. So. For, for the, yeah, yeah. I okay. could be picking, say, no, no, you just hand drawn them. Yeah, yeah sure. Uh, yeah. But yeah, yeah, but for the, yeah. <laughs> so this shape, cut it yeah. into four equal size, equal shaped, um, things. Not three. So here, here, that's, that's the solution for three. Do the same thing for four. Okay. I'll go away and do that. Yeah. Good. I'll, g I'll give you the answer, but I won't, uh, I won't put it up on YouTube. No, no, don't. Yeah. I don't, I don't want to spoil it. Okay. That's good. Where yeah. do you, where do you get these little gems from? Ah, uh, it's just all over the place. It's just, I don't, I don't know. Sometimes it's just a YouTube video I, I watch somewhere or, uh, somebody tells me that. Um, then there are, there's a whole series of books with, um, uh, lateral thinking puzzles. So, but the, that's not one. Then there's math, math, uh, math thinking puzzles. Let me see. Uh, In your comprehensive <laughs> library. See, where you have books, Hillary, I've got records. I've got like a wall of 12 inch records like that. Oh, nice. That's yeah. Good. It's, um, it's a good friend of mine also is, is, is like you. So he's very much into vinyl. Yeah. Yeah. And the wife's like, you don't play them anymore. I said, well, I do. I do. When the kids are a bit older, I've got a bit more time. I will play them. And it, right. it's, yeah. uh, I've spent bloody how many years? 15 years collecting them. It's like, uh, uh -huh. my precious. Uh -huh. But yeah. So what was that book you were trying to find? Uh, it's, it's mathematical puzzles. Um, right. So they, they have all these kind of uh, things. Okay. Uh, just, is, that where, is that where you got the uh, the chocolate bar one where you can cut it to gain the extra piece and still have a whole chocolate bar? I think that was just an internet meme. I think that was just was all the place. Um, it's kind of like the same thing as the, the, the white and gold or black and uh, blue <laughs> dress. That was brilliant, wasn't it? Holy shit. That, it's, it's just incredible. It, it, it actually depends on the, the surrounding light situation on what happens. Yeah, of course, because I, cause I looked at it on, like, on my Kindle, and I said, oh, yeah, that's white and gold, definitely. Yeah. And then Claire said, uh, my wife, she goes, have a look at this, and hold up her phone. I said, that's blue and black, but I said, that's different to what I've seen on a different device. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's like, no way, and then we're there with the brightness bar, and just like, yeah, testing yeah. it. <laughs> it's very it's fascinating. That's, that's really, really cool. Excellent. So, do you have an outro? Any outros? Uh, other to say, thank you so much for your time, Hilary. I appreciate you. Uh, you're a busy man. And uh, it's been a pleasure. The pleasure's been all mine. I love these, especially speaking to the likes of you. Very much a pleasure on my side as well. You enjoy your Swiss IPA. I'll go back and drink my old thumper. Old thumper. What was you? What you were having? Yeah, old thumper. Well, that and a Doom Bar as well, which is the Cornish ale, which is um, lovely. Are, are you? Li do you live in London? Uh, no, we're in north, so just uh, Liverpool. Li you're in, oh, you live in Liverpool. Yeah. Um, because London has a couple of extremely brilliant breweries. Um, there is something in Hobbs Day. Uh, let me give you. Then there's Brew by Numbers. Uh, Hops. Let's see, beer. See, I might, I might sacrifice bringing dice to Let's this year and bring you some of the craft ales, the local craft ales we have. Oh, you, you know that. I appreciate that. <laughs> numbers. And there is, what else? There is a couple of lo absolutely brilliant London breweries. So. Like a microbrewery kind of thing, yeah? Yeah, it's, they're all, they're all crafts, craft breweries. Yep. So this one here, that is actually one of my most favorite ones. Brilliant. On Hop State, they're, they're really good. And. Has then, it, sorry, go on. Uh, where do we have that? Brew Has the craft brewery business or industry gone bonkers in Switzerland as well? 
Nah, well, it's it's kind of at the start. There is a couple of very good brewers in Switzerland, but it's kind of maybe you know really, really, really good brewers. Maybe there's about three, four uh, very good brewers. Yeah. Right. Um, but it's kind of Switzerland is, is very far behind. Um, to me, still the U.S. is the it's it's got by far the better the best beer nation on the planet. Right. They're just crazy. That it's absolutely crazy what they what they're doing. <laughs> I don't, I'm biased. I quite like I quite like my northern British ales. Yeah. So get away with your American hops, you the, with your lovely coarseness and your grain. Mm. Oh, <laughs> it keeps me coming back for more. But yeah, well, all good. Well, it's all that you know. That's the Yakima Valley, the the Oregon hops. It's just absolutely fantastic. Or this, uh, the other region, which is also nice, is New Zealand. All so right. Okay. There's a, a hops called Motueka, which uh, which has a very Kind of you know um, almost uh, vegetably um, uh, character to it. It's absolutely fantastic. Okay, what's that called? Uh, Motueka. Uh, I'll type it. Yeah, please. Motueka. Wow. Okay. Yeah, that's not how I would have spelt it. Ah. Yeah. Well. Yeah. 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 I guess it's Maori. Is it or something crazy? Maori. Maori word. Yeah. 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 So. <laughs> Um, actually, if you're ever in London, so that the, the brewer numbers, they're on a street somewhere in London, and I okay. think the street has about four breweries, kind of you know, almost in a row. So there is, and and all four of them are actually pretty pretty cool. Excellent. So you could you could just have a, a have they each got a brewery tap? Can uh, you go yeah. have a pint in each? Yeah, yeah, absolutely, you can. Yeah, fantastic. So um, yeah, so no, no, Switzerland is nowhere, nowhere close to to uh, many, many countries. Um, it's kind of, I think, L- London itself has has more um, high class breweries than all Switzerland. So. <laughs> were, were you dabbling in a bit of homebrew? Uh, yeah, I, 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 I homebrew. Yeah, yeah. it's um, I, I, I I brew my own. What's that uh, like? A lot of work. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, very rewarding. Um, so basically, the the thing you can do is, since you're no not constrained to any um, uh, financial calculations and restrictions. So basically, uh, brewing really good beer is expensive because the ingredients um, you need them in quantities that you know that is expensive. Yeah. And uh, so basically, the beer I'm brewing, you you would have to sell it at such a high price that nobody would buy it actually. Okay. And uh, uh, so if, if price is just a non-issue, uh, brewing good beer um, becomes pretty easy. Um, it's not that it's, it's, it's very easy. I mean, you, you, there's a lot of things you can, you can mess it up. But um, if, if you know what's important in brewing, it's actually pretty easy to do a, 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 an incredibly good beer. So it's certainly not one of the, 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 the kind of the top world-class beers, but it's, it's, it, it's really tasty and very nice Um so it's just everywhere. The quality of the ingredients will yep. decide on the outcome of everything. <laughs> I'm going to give it a go one day. I'll give it a go. Sure. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's pretty easy. Just get one of these starter kits. And uh, then the, the thing is, when you, when you start brewing for the first time, you will notice that uh, you can completely geek out on brewing because there's so much nice equipment you can buy. Right. Uh, you know, all the, the, the measuring devices and stuff and, and, and copper cooling systems. And it's just, you know, it, there's just a lot of very cool stuff you can get. Yeah. And I bet your garage smells really lovely, doesn't it, with the mash tun and the... Uh... It's nice, yeah. Yeah. It's like, it smells like fresh bread. <laughs> yes. The manna from heaven. Fantastic. Okay, brilliant. Thanks, Ilari. Yeah, thank you. And I look forward to catching up with you again soon. I'll keep sure. in touch on the interwebs, and we'll, otherwise I'll see you in Let's Test in May. Yeah. All right, see you then. All the best. Cheers, bye-bye. Yeah, bye, Donks. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye.